Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tiffany, if you're new here, I happen to live in Greece and I travel all over Greece. And today I'm going to talk to you about summer travel to Greece. Recently, I came back from the US to Greece in the summer, which I don't normally do. And it reminded me of some of the things that I think you need to be aware of when traveling to Greece for the summer. Some of these things are specific to this particular summer and the others are more general things that are every year occurrences here in Greece. First, I wanna talk about the airports. They are all super crowded. Not so much in the US, I felt like they were a little less crowded. They're probably about the same as they are when I normally come back to Greece in the Christmas time. However, once I landed in Athens, I think about two or three other international flights landed at the same time of mine. So it was just a lot of people and the Athens airport in particular is not very big. So it just felt even more crowded than normal. So my advice on how to handle that is to immediately leave the plane and don't stop anywhere else. I made the mistake of stopping and going to the bathroom and I was at the very end of the line. <laughs> so what I should have done was go immediately to immigration. I might've been at the front of line and probably only had to wait 10 or 15 minutes and then I could have just gone to the bathroom and probably by the time I got out of the bathroom, my bag would have been on the belt. So, you know, it still worked out because by the time I did get to the baggage carousel, my bag was just going around and around. So I didn't have to wait for my bag. So there are some pros to it. So I have a couple of recommendations for you as after you exit the baggage carousel area and you are ready to make your way onto your next destination. If you're just transiting through Athens, so say you're going to an island on a flight instead of getting on a ferry, there are a couple of things that you can do. I want you to make sure you allot yourself enough time to do that transit. An hour may be enough time, but it may not, especially if you get to the immigration line and there are five, 50 people in front of you, um, you're, an hour is not gonna be enough time because if you're coming from say the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, somewhere like that, you're gonna have to pick up your bag, go back upstairs, check in for your flight, drop your bag, go through security again. If you're coming from the EU, you may not have to do this so you might have a little more wiggle room in your connection time, but again, there are lots of people. The security line could be really, really long. So just make sure you've given yourself enough time to get off your flight, account for any delays of your original flight leaving. If you are not transiting through Athens and you're coming into the city center, there are lots of things that you can do to sort of help you mitigate this crowd. So once you get through the baggage claim and you're out, you should probably have pre-booked a taxi. That's what I would do. That's what I've been doing a lot lately. Um, I don't wanna wait in the taxi line because sometimes it's really long. And in the summer in Athens, it's really hot. And I don't really wanna be standing out there in the heat waiting for a taxi. I happen to use a service called Welcome Pickups. Um, they are extremely reliable and I use them almost every time I go to the airport and even when I come back from the airport, I will put a link to them in the description box below. If not, you can either take public transportation, which probably for me, my recommendation is my next best bet if I'm not gonna pre-book a taxi, because again, I don't wanna stand in that taxi line. So those are your options, but I would immediately go and do that. Don't dawdle around because it all takes time and if it's super crowded, then the bus is crowded, the metro is crowded, and you may have to stand the whole time. Every year we have events that affect travel. Some of those events are holidays and sometimes it's a strike. And in the summer, the big date that you need to be aware of is August 15th. It's a big holiday here. Greeks usually take their annual holidays around this time. So a lot of people will be off work for the two weeks before the 15th or the two weeks after the 15th. And if they own their own business, they're likely closed for a week, two weeks, sometimes three weeks in August. Those are less likely to be places that you might frequent. However, it may be possible, particularly here in Athens, uh, because they're not so dependent on the tourist industry, whereas the islands, they're not going to be closed because usually on the islands, those people work 
all of the summer season and then they had closed for the entire winter season. Not gonna affect a restaurant, not gonna affect your hotel. The ferries are still gonna run, um, but just to keep that in mind. So if you walk up to a shop and it has a sign in Greek and it's got dates on it, you know they're probably closed for those dates. Strikes happen all year round here in Greece, um, but the later we get into the summer season, say in September, they tend to happen not more often, but that's when they tend to crop up. Uh, the summer season is kind of slowing down. And for some reason, September bees, that means it's time to strike. And usually it starts with a fairy strike, which of course is going to affect you. Um, sometimes in Athens, it will also mean that the metro, the bus, the tram, those will sometimes strike too. And a very rare occasion, taxis will also strike. Usually just here in Athens though, I've not seen it happen on the islands. But this is a reason I recommend when you're coming to Greece that you are not going to an island and then trying to make it back to the airport that your flight is leaving from on the same day. So if you're in Santorini and your flight home is from Athens, you need to be in Athens the night before your flight. Usually what I recommend is if you're wanting to see Athens that you do it at the end. So you come, you spend your two or three days here and then you get on your flight. So you have no worries about missing your flight home because of a ferry strike or bad weather. Sometimes weather happens and ferries get canceled. It's not as common in the summer, but as you get closer to the shoulder season, so late September, October, it can happen. I know a lot of people want to get a SIM card when they arrive at the airport in Greece. And to my knowledge, to this day, that does not exist. It seems to be the only airport that I have ever been to that doesn't have a local phone company with a stand, with a booth, selling SIM cards. It's probably a huge fail on somebody's point part. But anyway, so the good news is, is the airport has free Wi-Fi, so you wanna log into that so that you can get in contact with say your driver from Welcome Pickups, or you could say, hey, we wanna to go to the Metro. Where is it at the airport? So Wi-Fi is there. The other thing I recommend that you do when you come to Greece, especially if you're not gonna get a local SIM card, and with this, you probably don't need one, is that you use WhatsApp or Viber because a lot of people here in Europe communicate on WhatsApp, WhatsApp seems to be more popular. Um, a lot of times you'll see a business and it says, here's our WhatsApp number. And so you can just call that from your WhatsApp rather than having to have a local SIM card with minutes on it. <laughs> I do know that with the company Welcome Pickups that I use, my drivers will sometimes contact me on WhatsApp. Now for the issues that seem to be happening this particular year here in Greece. I don't know if these will keep happening. Uh, it's been sort of a trend that some of these things have been happening for the last couple of years. So we'll have to see what happens next summer. One of those things is that ever since the lockdowns ended and we have been open to tourists, is there are just more and more people coming to Greece and that has created a multitude of problems. One being that the lines for the Acropolis are insanely long. Uh, I've heard of people waiting for hours. So, and that's even with necessarily skip the line tickets because what it is is they are just skipping the line to buy the ticket and then they've had to still wait in line to get into the Acropolis because they're limiting probably how many people can be up there at one time. I'm sure that there are some sort of regulations about that. So usually I suggest that people go at like eight o'clock in the morning, but that doesn't seem to be the case this year. So go later in the afternoon for five o'clock. The uh, monuments in the summer don't close until sundown. One of the other things that I have been seeing in a lot of the travel groups, particularly on my favorite islands where I follow the local groups, is the price of sunbeds is going up every year. <laughs> and it's not outrageous, but if you're staying on an island and you're going to a beach every day and paying 20 euros for two sunbeds and you're doing that for a week, that's a lot of money that you may or may not have budgeted in. So you either need to find a beach that is less popular and maybe they're not asking you to pay. They're just asking you to spend a minimum on food and drink, which you would probably do anyway because you got to eat lunch. So, or you need to take your beach towel and buy an umbrella when you get there and go sit in the empty parts of the beach. 
I actually prefer this because it means you're not sitting next to a stranger, particularly on a beach that's super popular because they tend to cram more in. One thing, if you're already here, you may have discovered that everything is more expensive in Greece this year. Electricity has gone up across Europe. Food prices have gone up almost all over the world. And in Greece, they were already higher than the rest of the world. So the owners of hotels and restaurants are passing those costs on to the consumer. So your hotel rooms are probably more expensive this year. Food I haven't noticed in restaurants being quite a big increase, but I can see in some places that it's getting more expensive. I was in Sifnos a few weeks ago and I bought a milkshake that cost six euros. <laughs> I, I don't think I've even paid that much money for a milkshake in the US, so I was sort of taken aback. If you've been to Greece already this year, I'd like to know if there's anything else that you're seeing. Because I live here, and even though I travel here, sometimes I don't notice these things as much now that I've lived here for almost four years. So I'd love to hear if there's something that you're seeing this year that has shocked you. Please tell us in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you need more help planning your trip to Greece, there is a video coming up on the screen now that should help you. And I will see you guys in the next video.